The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. As part of its ongoing attempts to alleviate the housing shortage in the city of Johannesburg, the Johannesburg Social Housing Company is building 502 rental units in Dobsonville in Soweto. Zandile Mavuso has the story. The Johannesburg Social Housing Company, or Joshko, is working in collaboration with the city of Johannesburg municipality to fulfill the slogan, Josie at work, through the construction of a housing development valued at 200 million rands in Dobsonville. Delivering a keynote address during the media tour on site, MMC Dan Bovu explained what the project consists of. Ladies and gentlemen, we're building here a project that is going to yield 502 uh, units. In that project we have uh, 152 of it being what we'll call your one bedroom unit and 350 being that of your, your double uh, bedroom units. We are planting or plowing money here amounting to at least around 200 million of which an amount of about 52 million will be dedicated to enhance and continuously responding to what the mayor and the people of Johannesburg are talking about. This thing of unemployment or job opportunities or economic upspring. So there's money set aside to come back and say the mayor has announced and set large part of work must be done by constituency and residents where they found themselves. As you capacitate and bring big contractors and bring the skill, but that skill must also be matched by those that were producing in a particular community and particular uh, uh, constituency. With the mission of delivering rental units being based on catering for residents who do not qualify for government subsidized or bonded houses, Joshko CEO Rory Galoka explains how the development of this project has proven to be different from some of the developments the company has worked on in the past. It's the scale versus the location because um, the site opportunity is different to a lot of these other site opportunities. If you look around you, it's a built-up area. You're right in the heart of Dobsonville. These structures around you have been here for several years. The structures around you are freestanding houses, owner-occupied houses. This piece of land was a vacant buffer between the houses. It's got a servitude that used to run through between the houses. And it was a site used for dumping. A lot of the other projects we use, uh, that we initiate are completely greenfields developments, usually neighboring an informal settlement and so on and so forth. So this is a big opportunity because all the houses around you are freestanding houses on their own earth, densities are quite low. Whereas most of the blocks that are going in here are going to be four-story walk-ups. So the densities are high. Secondly, all of the units are going to be rental apartments, whereas all the neighboring houses are for ownership. So we can create 502 units um, for people, a lot of whom are around the neighborhood subletting from these homeowners. So I suppose it is different. It's not completely different because that's what Joshka does every day, but it's a big opportunity to do it right here in the center of Soweto. Geloka further adds that the project will be constructed in stages and some units will be rented out before the end of this year. It's only really going to be completed in uh, June, July 2016. 
So uh, we've got a we've got a 24 month program. Um, it's a fast track program. The program is very tight. We get a lot of calls from the community wanting to know when they can take occupation, when they can, when we're going to open for applications. Um, but they won't. Uh, we won't be occupying the whole project until June, July of 2016. Although we are going to occupy in phases. So the first phase is the phase behind us, uh, because the access point is on that side, but we have a servitude that goes through to the road at the back behind us and so this phase is not going to uh, sit unoccupied for 18 months we're going to occupy it in phases and then uh, temporarily fence it until the second phase is complete and that occupation of the phase behind us um, is likely to take place in October November so after the first 12 months of 2015. In its quest of creating an economically free municipality, Bovu indicates the vital role that the residents play in the development of the project. We are expecting to at least have around 800 job opportunities created in this particular project. Of course, beyond that, if our people are coordinated properly, do things properly, they register Joseph where they have cooperative. What it means, some of them will be here for many years because they will be then doing the maintenance of the building, making sure that these things function properly because they must be maintained. So in reality, we are calling on our residents, stakeholders that are here representing different constituency. Mekan Salara will have spoken about we continuously, not today only, from the foundation of our forefathers, we had declared and said, people are their own liberators. Not today. People themselves, what we must do is to initiate, coach them, show them that they must take part Joshko Rental Housing Scheme caters for people who earn between 3,500 rands and 7,000 rands. The idea is that once these people's economic status improves, they will move into bond houses and providing other citizens the opportunity to rent in their place. However, Bovo indicates that it is important for people to play their role and pay rent to ensure that the project continues to benefit other people within the municipality. I must urge our residents. It is very discouraging when people arrive in projects and start to be allocated. Once they are there, they then say, because this is government, facility this this is government project they then decide not to do what they are supposed to do that of pay once you do that you are killing other coming projects you are making those who collect this money non-profit because josco is not expected to make profit but it must recoup the money we put in so that it also plant the very same thing on other areas if now you don't pay for that little that you are requested you are by means bit by bit killing that particular project and making that project not to go to other areas other news making headlines this week downtown johannesburg showcased in big budget hollywood blockbuster president robert mugabe says zimbabwe is open to foreign investment and weak steel demand forces ArcelorMittal South Africa to run the upgraded Newcastle mill below capacity. Scenes from the latest installments of the popular American superhero film The Avengers, which was shot in Johannesburg in February, will promote the city and the country as a film destination, owing to its enormous economic and marketing value. In terms of being a city and part of um, what we call government, like, like the um, Housing Film Commission, we have to create an enabling environment to allow locals and foreigners who are interested in, in investing in film to do so confidently and to be able to produce 
their work uh, effectively um, because the services are of, of a high enough standard and there's other benefits like great weather which um, you know, causes people not to have to go over their, their budgets. And then obviously things like a favorable exchange rate always helps. And um, a city like Joburg is, is known as a, as a value for money destination. Although we might be a long haul destination and people might have to spend money getting here, once we're here, we are uh, known as a, as a value for money destination. Zimbabwe President Robert Mugabe last month told a South Africa Zimbabwe Business Forum that despite media reports and fears that Zimbabwe's indigenization policy implies that the country is not open to foreign investments, the country is indeed open to foreign-owned businesses. Zimbabwe and South Africa have signed five bilateral agreements to strengthen trade between the two countries. The agreements were signed during Zimbabwe President Robert Mugabe and a delegation of government ministers and business people's two-day visit to South Africa. Mugabe told attendees of the South Africa Zimbabwe Business Forum that contrary to media reports, Zimbabwe is open to foreign investment. He explained that government was committed to ensuring that Zimbabweans benefited from the country's natural resources. We should ensure on the basis of this alliance, on the basis of this family togetherness, that our people, our people for whom we went to prison, for whom we suffered so much, <coughs> sacrificed so much, are beneficiaries of independence. It's sad to see our people still in the same condition as they, they were before the political dispensations of, of both countries. Let us, let us please, we business people, with government assistance where necessary, ensure that there is transformation in the lives of people. Steel producer ArcelorMittal South Africa, which recently completed the 2 billion rand reline of the blast furnace at the Newcastle Mill, has decided not to immediately ramp up the plant to its expanded 1.9 million ton a year nameplate capacity owing to weak domestic market conditions. Our domestic market remains under severe pressure. We are not seeing the growth happening in South Africa. And we wanna, we're at the forefront of this. Remember our long steel products supplies the construction industry primarily and our flat steel products provide in the manufacturing and mining industry. We are not seeing private infrastructure spent. We don't see it. We see a few shopping centers that are being constructed. That's about it. We are seeing no government infrastructure spend coming through at this stage and we're seeing very suppressed spending in the mining industry. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.